Hello and welcome to the Blue Report Backstage. I am Rich Smith, the editor of the Blue Report, and today we'll be learning more about a true jack-of-all-trades. But contrary to how the saying normally ends, this guy is a master of them all. He is an educator, a writer, and creator of Star Trek The Animated Voyages, among other things. Please welcome John Markwitz. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is our pleasure. Uh, really, really love the uh, new publication. And, uh, you know, tell us some more about you. You know, uh, like you said, I'm an actor. I'm a writer. I direct. I'm a graphic artist and a teacher. Uh, I just hear from people around me, I'm someone who just can't seem to slow down. So, um, you know, I, I think of William Shatner. He is known for everything. I like that. So if it's good enough for Bill, I say, you know, it's good enough for me, too. <laughs> well, our Outpost 10F patrons know you for Star Trek The Animated Voyages, but uh, you've got some other notable works out there. Why don't you uh, tell us about how you got started? I do. Uh, you know, media has been something which has inspired me in so many ways, from movies to books, performances. They're just fantastic stories out there. And I've always been a storyteller. I've always wanted to be the guy in the room coming up with that great story and having an audience. And some of my first productions when I was a kid were fan films, uh, comics, short stories. But my first published productions were radio and TV spots. And that was followed by poetry and, and short stories being published and things like that, acting gigs. And it's been really fun to have those. I'm just always staying busy. Awesome. Well, you know, as I as I mentioned, you are quite the Renaissance man. You also act and you write and teach. What's your first love, though? You know, I consider teaching just like writing. It's an art form, and teaching is a performance. You know, to me, any art I produce is what I love. Uh, art is special. You know, it, it's something that makes the world less mechanical. It brings the humanity out in all of us. And uh, teaching is, is only a part of my life, but it is an important one. And a lot of entertainers have been or are teachers along with their other careers, so it, it just fits. How did you get involved with teaching? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you went to school. Was it something you always wanted to do? It was. You know, there were a lot of things I've wanted to do in life um, that I'm, I'm doing now and things that I'll do in the future. And with teaching, it was something that I went through all the uh, normal steps and uh, I have my degree in English and a degree, uh, my master's in education. And I went the, the normal route, student teaching and getting hired to step into uh, the classroom. And it's been a great fit. You know, all the things that I've done, um, I think, serve me really well in the classroom. And it's something I, I enjoy doing. Did teaching lead you to all of these other opportunities or did these things just pop up on their own? No, you know, it's been a lot of different things. There, there's so many different uh, paths that I've taken. And teaching is something that really is what I, I, I do, and I use a lot of these other skills and, um, and projects to enhance in the classroom. But all the other things are just that kind of blood, sweat, and tears. When it's acting, going out on auditions and having that agent and um, the – positive, the negative, the rejection, the accomplishments, and then with writing, it's a whole other avenue, and submitting to publishers and getting to know that world. So it's really just, I guess it's whatever the hour of the day is, I'll, I'll be someone different. And then when it's in the classroom, I'm the teacher. And then when it's out of the classroom, it's the teacher plus something else. And we're just a whole different uh, level of, of uh, work. We've talked a bit backstage, and uh, you've mentioned uh, your wife who helps you with uh, the, yes. the Star Trek, and uh, you, she, she is pregnant, correct? Uh, she was. We had our first child uh, last September. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's but why you're moving. <laughs> we, we are, yeah. we uh, getting closer to family and, and then kind of experiencing that a little bit more. But it was fun because while we were writing the first one together, uh, that's when uh, he was born. Ah. And uh, it was in the middle of that, and, and as some of the readers had known from uh, some previous trivia I'd put on the, the uh, site, 
was that the registry of the Star Haven was 927, which is his birthday. <laughs> oh, that, that's pretty cool. Where do you find the time to do all this with, you know, a young family and, you know, <laughs> you've just got so many irons in the fire? Well, you know, it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's a lot of work, but it is a lot of fun. And finding the time, as, as I know you can appreciate, uh, can be difficult. <laughs> but it really is just a matter of prioritizing and knowing when you have that time, what do I work on next, and keeping it all straight. But, you know, in the end, it's all worth it. And I feel really good as an artist to have a lot of different kind of work out there. I like being known by different things, by a lot of things. So it is a lot of work, but I always keep that in mind that I want uh, that kind of portfolio to follow me through life. Where did the idea for Star Trek The Animated Voyages come from? You know, I've made comics since I was a kid. Uh, they weren't too glamorous, but they were fun. And I wanted to do something more professional, a little more sizable for a larger audience. And I really try to make the animated voyages something that looks like it could have been from, uh, from a comic shop. And the idea came really just from watching reruns again of the animated series, which I've loved since I was young. It's nostalgia mixed with um, a unique aspect of Star Trek that, for me, unites the joy of animation with the philosophy of Gene Roddenberry. Have you always been a Star Trek fan then? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Star Trek has always been a part of my life. I love that it's, it's always been something that treats audiences as intelligent beings. And Star Trek is so personal to a lot of people, and I share in that sentiment. You know, it can bring people together. Uh, Some of the stories can help explain or help people deal with the tougher aspects of life. And just look at how many successful professionals we have today because of Star Trek. People who have advanced the best parts of, of humanity. And I think that helps define why it's so special and so important to, uh, to so many. I got to say, you know, fr- from the layout standpoint, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, it really does indeed look like something you could go and pull off the shelf at your local comic store. So I got to ask, what goes into producing each one of those issues? I know, uh, you, you know, it takes a little while to get them done, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. You know, we are only a, a, a two-person team. And my wife and I tackle all the aspects of the production from the initial story concept to editing to the website operation and the promotion, which, you know, some people may not um, remember or, or imagine would be part of that. You know, we look at the actual production of things that artists do, but a lot of times, especially for something like this, there's also that uh, back end part, that post production, all that stuff to get it out there, to get your, your name out there, to get the work out there. Even if you're known for something, you may not be known for that thing. And so it's a lot of work to be your own promoter if you, if you need to. And um, I always say artists have to be great marketers. And the work will speak for itself, but you have to have people get to see the work first for it to actually do that. But it is a big task. It um, starts with the story. You know, from that point, the comic starts to take shape and and I really appreciate the compliment that it looks like what you'd find in a comic uh, shop because that's, that's partly what takes the most time is we could get probably an issue done every week, but it may be, well, it wouldn't be up to the standards that we want. We want you to look at it and think, I could have found this if I went shopping. I could see this in my comic collection. And so it does take a lot of time. Uh, when it's all over, even, we go back through it and we'll make any changes we need to to make sure that that final product is as good as we can make it. It's really interesting because uh, I um, I obviously wasn't alive when the filmation series was on, but I've been uh, revisiting it through Netflix uh, since I started reading your comic, and it's really interesting to see some of those background characters. Um, come to the forefront. So, you know, what was the idea uh, around bringing some of those background characters in as now the main stars? You know, I've, I've always enjoyed stories that explore the lives of those characters we only see 
for a brief time on screen or in pages. It makes it really interesting when you watch or read one thing and you only have maybe a line of dialogue or a shot. Maybe it, maybe it's a guest star. And then a series comes along, another book series comes along, and they explore that character. And I wanted to do that to this. I wanted to connect to the animated series like other shows have done, bringing in characters from other series, promoting them to the principal cast. And I think that really helps make it original. It helps bring a little more interest to the series, that these are people we, um, if you had seen the series, you may recognize their name or their face. And if you hadn't, um, then they're at least brand new characters all the way around. I, uh, the, the one that jumps out me at me is the first officer. He mm-hmm. was in an episode uh, that was very close to the timeline of uh, C- uh, City on the Edge of Forever, and I was like, that's right. him! <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's someone that, uh, it was the episode yesteryear. Yes, okay. And and I, I thought that'd be a very interesting dynamic to, to further explore Thalen and to bring him in and uh, to make sure that he's not written as Spock, but he does serve the same idea, the same role as a science officer, as the first officer, and being uh, scientific, having that background, he is logical, but not in the same ways. And so as you'll see in the series, that character, for example, has more emotion, uh, a little bit quicker. In issue two, there's uh, a little more character exploration with him, actually, that will drive through the story arc. And you can see that um, there might be a concern, and you can see in his dialogue he is concerned, where maybe someone like Spock uh, would not have been so vocal about it. So, yeah, I, I, I do like having some of those characters in there um, and, and to, to respect them, too, to write for them in a way that seems believable. And if we had seen this as an episode with the uh, Filmation series, that it would all connect why did you choose the timeline of the animated series? You know, I think that um, the animated series, you know, it, it only ran for a short time, and I really feel it's it's underappreciated, or it's just not known. Either a lot of fans haven't seen it, uh, they just don't know about it, um, or if they have, generally from what I've seen, people I've known, um, they come to appreciate it a little bit later in life. And when they, when they do, when they finally see it or they see it again, they really appreciate some of these fantastic stories written by the storytellers. And I wanted this comic to add to that part of Star Trek and increase the number of adventures set in that style just because there hadn't been a lot made. And I thought that'd be the perfect avenue uh, to, to kind of re-explore now that we are We've gone to Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, Voyager, um, and we had Enterprise, but of course Voyager and the movies being at the forefront of the Star Trek franchise so far. I wanted to kind of go back a little bit, not as a prequel, but to kind of fill in some of this time frame. That being the case, do you have any plans to introduce any species? I know on Enterprise they they introduce species like the Sulabon, uh, do you that you don't see anywhere else afterwards? Do you guys have any plans to to bring anybody new in at this point? Definitely um, for issue two, uh, which which comes out today, uh, a new species is introduced, which plays an integral role to this initial story arc, and uh, so much so that it it helps connect to O'Shea's past. It's a character story. We're we're very proud of this one, uh, as as we are with the first. And from this point forward, we have a lot of concept drawings and ideas for new species, planets. You know, reading the first one, it was a huge storyline. And to help uh, continue that, to make things graphically interesting, fun plot lines, you know, part of that is to bring in new characters and new species into the fold. Now, the animated series, of course, based on the Enterprise, uh, was it always your intention to change the venue? You know, in the beginning, actually, my thought was to just continue the adventures of the Enterprise. But when I started, when I really sat down and started constructing the first one, it just really hit me that with so many episodes, novels, 
uh, comics, fan fiction, fan films, more, you know, surrounding the crew of the Enterprise, I felt I would be able to continue a lot more if the stories revolved around a new crew, a new ship. And, you know, it also allows us the opportunity to create those backstories for characters while respecting canon. And, you know, I am such a huge Star Trek fan. My requirement, you know, Leah's requirement, um, both of ours, is to respect what's already been established and just to fill in some of these adventures that lead to the original series and beyond. So how often do you guys plan on releasing a new adventure? I know the the last one came out at the uh, end of last year. You have a new one coming out uh, today. Uh, Obviously, it takes a while. So when can we expect Mm -hmm. more stuff? You know, that term, labor of love, comes to (laughs) mind. Um, (laughs) They do take a lot of time, but uh, not in a daunting way. In, in all the best ways, you know, it's so fun to be able to have a story idea. And in, in this vein, you know, in this science fiction, in this Star Trek uh, style, and be able to now have an outlet to tell those. So it's, it's always fun when we can get to the computer and get there and continue some story. So with all that in mind, you know, we don't have an exact schedule. And maybe that's because it is still so new. When the first one came out, um, it really was designed as a pilot episode from start to finish that it could be read just by itself and that was it, mm-hmm. or we could have gone on and we decided to move forward. And so because of that, uh, the second episode really didn't start. This issue didn't start until about maybe February to March. Um, I think, I think February. And so with that in mind, you know, with things going as they have been, you know, I would like to do maybe two or three uh, a year. And really the focus, though, is just making sure that the quality always meets our standards. And that's really what guides, along with time, when they can come out. And the stories really are incredible. So where do those ideas come from? Do you guys just, you know, throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks? You know, it's, the story ideas, as any writer will understand, comes from anywhere at any time. It it usually starts with something that comes to mind like, uh, you know, I wonder what would happen if, or the crew visits a world where, and sometimes it's, uh, it's even at the weirdest times, we'll be sitting on the couch or watching a TV show, a movie, I'll just grab the remote, push pause, and go, you know what, what if, uh, what if this happened? And, you know, Leah, bless her heart, she will listen And even though I'm interrupting perhaps her favorite show, she will listen and she'll provide great commentary that makes it all kind of come together. So we are a great team when it comes to that. Um, That meticulous process of ensuring the story is shaped and remains as original as possible, that's always in our minds, with hundreds of hours of Star Trek that have been produced and the novels that have been out there and trying to also stay true to the fandom, to the the fan um, films and fan fiction that have been out there. Trying to respect all of that and be original is generally what most of our discussions are about. How do we make this different and and yet still work? Have, uh, well, obviously it's raised some eyebrows. I mean, it it is an excellent put-together comic. Have you heard from anyone... Uh, official from the Star Trek franchise to pat you on the back or say, you know, this is pretty cool. Oh, I would love that. I would <laughs> love that. They can they can email me and call me up and say we'd love to uh, commission some of these and get a new series going. I'm I'm always open for that idea. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you know, honestly, that's uh, that that isn't the uh, the driving force with any of my fan work I've done, but it is always on my mind because I want to make sure that it respects the genre. I want to make sure that it it attracts the fans in the right ways that make it just like the series that they've loved or the other books that they've read. And sure, if anyone official were to to read it and think, you know, this is there's something here, you know, this has um, a good backing to it. There are people who like it. Um, we could, you know, we may be able to do this. That's definitely something I'd be um, just jumping at the chance to do officially. 
I got to ask, you know, with so many, and I'm, you know, this may be all encompassing, but uh, fan production stuff out there like Anaxar and Renegades mm -hmm. and Hidden Frontier, do you think that the lack of uh, any Star Trek on TV at this point is really adding fuel to the fire because people really want that? I think so. I think that's a big part of it. Um, I think that a lot of people will agree uh, that Star Trek is served really well on television. And it may not be just television, but in an episodic, in a serialized kind of manner. And we don't have that right now. We haven't had it for a while. And so I think that is feeling. There is, a, there is this desire with a lot of content producers out there uh, that are Star Trek fans to use what they have, the skills they have, the mediums they have, to create something. And this may be a product of that. This may be why um, there's some, some very good attention with the comic and the idea of the comic, because there is some originality to it. It's uh, something where you can be invested in characters. And so I think there, there is a lot to that. And we're, we're going to see more. You know, we're going to see a lot more... Uh, fan films pop up and, and um, other comics and other fan fiction just continuing because there is that need that I think Star Trek fans are a community. We are definitely a community and I think we all share that similar vision, that outlook, that positivity and I think we, we feed off of that, of these great stories that tell about characters, uh, character-driven and with wonderful plot lines. So, yeah, I think that uh, this comic contributes to that and, and everything else does. And i got to say, you know, by and large, the quality of the work has been exemplary. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be the, you know, people putting together the, the fan movies like, uh, you know, Renegades. I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of uh, quote-unquote official Star Trek people who are connected with these, but they're not getting paid to do this stuff by right. and large, and they're right. really putting out some great, great stories, and you know they're doing it at their own at their own cost, and they're also uh, putting out stuff that looks you know as good or better than the stuff that's been out for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, your comic is just one more, you know, piece of that puzzle that, you know, we haven't seen anything like this in quite a few years. And it's got to be gratifying to know that so many people are coming to, to take a look at it and saying, you know, this is really good. Yeah. Now, I've been very happy with that. I've gotten a lot of mail about that, a lot of great uh, compliments and comments and features out there uh, from, from people who have, have just discovered it. And I'm really happy about that because when you're, again, tackling Star Trek, there's always that um, that expectation, which is deserved, to honor what has been done before and make sure that it's not just a frivolous story, but that it actually adds something. And that something could be a morality play. It could be something that helps propel some of the history of the future we've already seen, but something that it's not just a story in space called Star Trek but that it's an actual Star Trek story, and that's a big difference. Where can people find out more about you? Where can people see the rest of your work? Uh, you know, anyone can visit uh, Twitter. It's at John Mark Hewitt, uh, or the official site, which is johnmarkhewitz.com, and that has links to other projects, to uh, other developments, news, updates. There's a lot in the work, uh, in the works, there's uh, an, an independent film I'm going to be working on pretty soon, um, wanting to do a, uh, a street game show, which I'm very excited about to kind of use some of the, the comedy I've done over the years to get that going. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot on the horizon, and this is uh, one, of the, uh, one of those projects, but all my projects are important to me. Well, we'll make sure to put those links in the comments below so people can... Uh... Click on that and uh, check you out and see more of uh, Star Trek The Animated Voyages. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Hey, John, thank you so much for joining us today, and best of luck with the uh, rest of the series. I appreciate it. Thank you.